Um, moving average masterclass, and this really is going to be um, something and 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 uh, a video that you will not really have heard this information um, about moving averages. Regardless of what you think you know about moving averages, this is not going to be your typical um, uh, moving average um, uh, video or, or webinar or anything like that. This truly is going to be, you know, a, a, a masterclass. So um, what we're going to be covering is understanding value, uh, what our moving average is exactly, um, mean reversion, why we're going to be using the 63, 126 and 253 moving averages, um, the moving average technical strategy in a sense that um, we'll be combining, um, uh, I guess, the moving average technical strategy with our core um, strategy, which is um, supply and demand zones and um, really applying um, and, and showing you how to apply the moving averages to your trading view charts if you use trading view. So um, what I again want you to do, and I alluded to this at the beginning, is really kind of just unlearn. So if you know anything about uh, moving averages or you know nothing about moving averages brilliant if you do know anything about moving averages i want you to really kind of just dismiss all of what the popular um youtubers and popular videos say about um uh, moving averages because the narrative i find is is basically an echo chamber so you will have one person will come up with what seems to be a, you know, a, a, I guess a plausible narrative about what move, how to use moving averages. And everyone's obviously entitled to their own uh, opinions and strategies, et cetera. Not to say that they're, you know, right or wrong. But after this, I want you to compare what you learn in this video, in this webinar live compare and compare that if you want to yeah you don't have to but if you want to with everybody else that's doing and and trading moving averages and you'll see a massive difference it's totally different you're not going to see anything like this so unlearn if you if you know about moving averages yeah and the narratives generally tend to be you know that moving averages are used to identify trends and confirm reversals um no that's not what it is um Again, they will tell you popular, you know, videos and will tell you that, you know, uh, if price is trending up, it, you know, moving averages tell you if prices are trending up, down or sideways. Again, that's a very basic and simply simplistic way of looking at it. And um, I would say disregard that. Um, that moving averages confirms if the trend is in motion or reversing. Again, disregard that, unlearn that. And also, the fourth is what you'll hear about, you know, the, the pros and the cons of a moving average is that it's a lagging indicator. Again, this is just, you know, stuff that people say, an echo chamber. Um, it sounds good, but it's because people don't actually truly under, understand what moving averages, the, the actual um, intention of what moving averages are. Um, so I want you to just unlearn and suspend what you kind of know about moving averages and, uh, for now, and then, uh, make up your mind at the end of this video. So we first have to understand that value, right? Determining value will determine where the trend is going, right? And value is not price and price is not determined by by the value yeah so i'll say that again so price is not determined value is not determined by price and price is not determined by its value so uh, just because something is going higher or lower on a certain time frame doesn't mean that that is its current uh, value because things can be undervalued or they can be expensive so as we typically uh, look at i guess charts we understand that, you know, when we can see that something is, is, is either a bargain in the past because prices went to the upside. And if prices can t can't go any higher and they come down, then that is generally uh, what we would consider uh, expensive, right? In, in I guess in the short term, and it's more price based. We're looking at a price chart, looking at basically where prices moved from there and moved away from there. And uh, in between an expensive area and a bargain area is what we would call fair value. The 50% area is what was known as fair value. And this is all covered in the supply and demand course. Yeah, but to, but to determine value, we need to look at <clears throat> and, and future value. 
we need to um, really kind of understand fundamental analysis and risk sentiment. That, for me, is really the only way to determine or attempt to determine true value of uh, any asset that you're buying, right? So, for, for example, stock fundamentals, people look at revenues, earnings, returns on equity, profit margins, etc. In commodities, you know, fundamentals, supply and demand, macroeconomic factors, which are driven by risk on and risk off sentiment. Yeah. And in currency land, our fundamental analysis is driven by, you know, central bank monetary policies and government fiscal policies based on GDP, inflation and um, interest rate cycles. Yeah. So it's not we're not just looking at price, we're determining what current price is and we can look towards what potential future value may be. Um, and whether something is a bargain by looking at its fundamental analysis, yeah, and then we go to a price chart. Um, everyone following so far, by the way, everyone following? Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, simple stuff, right? Now, what are moving averages really? What are they really? So the moving average is a simple technical analysis tool that smooths out price data by creating a constantly updated average price average price yeah so the average price or the average is taken over a specific time period like either 10 days 20 minutes 30 weeks or any time that a trader chooses yeah so we you know we're looking at um average price and as i said before where you know we when we're looking at price based um uh fair i guess uh, um uh average price we're looking at highs and lows what's the what's what's the average between a high and a low would be what is known as fair value on a price right now the average price yeah or mean is known as it's is fair value has to be therefore moving average technical analysis indicators identify fair value on a price chart but over a period of time it is time based rather than um, price based in a sense that it obviously it looks at the price, but it looks at um, uh, 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 the fair value over a period of time and any time that the trader chooses. So generally traders tend to, you know, put moving averages on all manner of, of, of timeframes. And I'm going to tell you why, in fact, um, in the method that I'm going to show you, that doesn't make any sense at all. And really what the, the most powerful um, moving average periods are, when I say powerful, I'm talking about the ones that really make, make the most sense. So again, just to recap, moving average indicators identify fair value on a price chart. Who wants to buy an expensive area? No one, yeah? The, 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 the price you generally want to buy at in life in general if you go to a supermarket if you go to a car dealership if you're looking at buying a home you want to literally at the bare minimum you want to buy at a fair value a bargain is always the best um, price to buy at but you want to buy normally at fair value so why use the 63 126 and two, five, three moving average period. So if you guys have gone through a course, generally what I used to used to use, um, you know, maybe about up until maybe about maybe six months ago was the um, common time periods, right? So, you know, you've got the 15, 20, I used to use the 20, the 50, 100 and 200, which is typically the, um, the um, moving average periods that are generally banded about um, either on YouTube, on Instagram, online. And um, I I was doing, I can't remember exactly how I've managed to basically come about this, but I guess it came over time. And what you guys know is that we look at, you know, bank forecasts, we look at analyst forecasts. And one of the things I started looking at was, <clears throat> you know, the forecast. So forecasts would we used to do, you know, they do like a, a one to three month, six to 12 month and long term forecasts, right? For, you know, the dollar index or whatever it is. We had like ING, for example, doing their forecasts and they do the fourth quarter, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And then I would also see certain time periods, for example, on 
on um on trading view yeah and if you look at the bottom left hand side of the trading view chart you'll see you know one day five day one month three month six month one year year to date yeah and you'll see that type of um uh time frame right so it's it's it was a constant theme that kept coming up um and it comes up in trading right so you get your monthly you get your three monthly six monthly year to date etc so i thought to myself well when it comes to fair value and we're all we're always about looking for you know value right this is the whole point in supply and demand is identifying bargain potential bargain prices and where fair value is and i thought to myself well if a moving average yeah is uh, uh, an indicator that um uh, identifies where the mean is and where fair value potentially is or where the average is, why do we use 20, 30, 50, 100 and 200 day uh, or period moving averages? What is the sense behind it? Is it just because, and as I was saying to you guys that Trading tend, tends to be a bit of an echo chamber, right? Once one person says something, then all of a sudden everyone else is saying, you know, pretty much a similar thing. So one of the things that you, that you know about trading is that you got to, you, you kind of don't have, you can't do the things that everyone else does in order to, you know, make money, right? Because hardly anyone does make money in, in trading consistently. So you've got to do something different or think different. So I applied and I thought to myself, what if I apply the, Certain time periods that the banks use, for example, one month, they, they tend to look at one month time frame, three month, six month, 12 month, yeah, time frames and actually see if I can and see if there's a, a, a an average um, fair value price over that time period, because then that would kind of match certain forecasts that, you know, we uh, that we look at right from the uh, from the from the financial institutions. So what I did was I found out those time periods. Sorry, I found out those time periods and um, having a little search as far as how many trading days there are. There were in 2020, for example, and there were 253 trading days. Yeah, 253 trading days. In 2020, February has the lowest, and March, June, July, October, December has the most 22 with an average of 21 per month. So the average is 21 per month or 63 trading days per quarter. And obviously, obviously when we go into a, tra a, a chart, we don't have the weekends, do we? We just have literally five days and then we have, uh, you know, uh, Sunday, I guess, Sunday evening to Friday evening, right? So I thought to myself, let me apply just logically what you know the one month which is a 21 days three month quarter which would be 63 six months which would be one two six day and then the yearly which would be two five three trading days and going back to the point i was making with regards to traders choosing their own time frames and periods and things like that it only makes sense on a, this only makes sense on a one day chart. Again, the question has to be asked is why are you using a 50 period moving average on a 15 minute chart? What is the significance of the last 15 candles or the last 50 candles on a 15 minute time frame? Can anyone can anyone uh, 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 answer that question or a four hour? What is the last 24 hour candles price action got to do with anything if you're using the 20 period moving average? Exactly. No idea. No idea. It makes absolutely no sense. Just even in, in general, even if you're looking at it on a daily time frame chart. Yeah. If you're looking at the 50 period, what is what? Why does 100 days? Why does 50 days? What is the significance of 200 days? days what has that got to do with anything and i think personally it's what's known as round number bias yeah there's a round number bias and that's not to say that these these typical and usual moving averages yeah don't work i'm not saying that whether they don't work i'm just saying 
why are you using them? You have to really understand an indicator. If you're going to use an indicator, really understand its significance for you to really have trust and belief in that indicator, right? So if you're using a moving average, most people don't even understand about average price and value, yeah? So there you go. You see what I'm saying? Because then that builds belief. That does build belief in what it is that you're trading, right? I mean, you can either use it from a statistical perspective. So for example, even if you don't fully understand something, if statistically you can see it working, then brilliant. You just go and use it, right? From an indicator perspective. But sometimes deeper thought needs to be had. And this is one of the things that I was, that I kind of was, was doing. So for me, what makes sense to me, if I'm trying to determine value and in the, I guess, in the spirit of understanding where fair value is, because again, the point is at a bare minimum, we want to buy, we want to at least buy at fair value. You wouldn't want to buy anything in life at an expensive price. We want to buy at fair value or start buying really at fair value. So supply and demand, we use and we know that there are potential bargain areas, but then we can have the confluence of using um, a, a different method of measuring where potential value is via moving averages. And so, um, you know, the two indicators or the two moving average settings that generally people use are the simple moving average and the exponential moving average indicators, right? And I basically just said, all right, I'm going to use both of them because again, it's not a case of, all right, one is better than the other. How can it be if we're talking about just identifying where potentially fair value may be on a price chart? Yeah. So why not use both? So this is the reason why, as you guys know already, I do have both on a price chart. Yeah. So we understand where those potential zones are. And again, the market's not perfect. We're not saying that it's definitely going to bounce off of this one line. It's the same thing why people, when, you know, when people draw um, support and resistance as just one line, how can you draw it as one line when price is more dynamic than that? Yeah, it's more of a zone. We know that we have liquidity, stop hunting. We have so many different market participants. How come, even if price does you know, bounce accurately off of a certain level doesn't mean that you should draw support and resistance or supply and demand as just an, an, an accurate price line, right? It doesn't make any, well, it makes sense in the guess in their world, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Not anymore anyway, maybe when I was, you know, maybe six, seven years ago when I was learning. Anyways, when you don't know better, right? Now, an important point in in understanding moving averages is also understanding mean reversion, yeah? So mean reversion is a theory used in finance that suggests that asset prices eventually will revert to the to their medium or long-term mean or average, as we know, fair value level. So in cases of mean reversion, the thought is that any price that strays far from the medium or long-term norm will again return reverting to its understood state. Yeah. So any, you know, when you get price move away from its its fair value, its monthly fair value, eventually it tends to come back to that. Now no, nobody knows exactly when it's going to come back, for example, but generally prices will come back or, you know, mean reversion back to its uh, original, you know, uh, its, its understood state. And in, in our case, price generally will come back to fair value. I'm not saying that prices will reverse at every single fair value. That doesn't make any sense because we have to understand what the value is at the time or potential value is at the time. But we understand that prices will come back to their fair value price at some point, mean reversion. They always do. So moving averages, the moving average strategy. Now, this is where I guess a lot of YouTubers do have it right. And it's just, it's just a simple thing, right? So it's not necessarily anything complex or anything like that, right? So you have a moving average technical strategy. Price trades above or below a moving average, yeah, after being, you know, below it or above it. So what that means is, and I'll say it again, so price trades above a moving average after being below it or 
price trades below a moving average after being above it. So in this case, we're looking at price trading above the moving average after being below it. Yeah, so this is the area right here. Can you guys see my cursor, by the way? Can you guys see my cursor? Yep. So we're going to see, so you see basically prices here, prices go above it. Yeah. And then you've got, obviously, this is this is going to be our um, our monthly moving average, some monthly fair value. And then wait for a pullback, which is basically mean reversion to the moving average, basically, which is fair value. And then when price touches the moving average, which is fair value, look for an entry trigger. That's basically what a moving average strategy is. Yeah, so prices go above that, above price, after being below it, prices revert back to their fair value state. And then you see that, you know, if you took price, obviously, over the past, uh, you know, 21 candles and the daily time frame chart, that would be its fair value. And then you're looking for that being fair value. Yeah. And you have to note that the first price touch is the higher probability trade. The more a moving average is touched, you know, or bought or traded, uh, the more perceived value for the financial institutions diminish. And it makes sense in life, right? Um, if you go to, again, a supermarket and you find a bargain and you think, you know, that, I don't know, soap, for example, you know, is maybe two pounds off, yeah? compared to every, every other um, supermarket. It's an absolute bargain. But if every other supermarket now starts lowering their price for soap in alignment with where you bought the bargain, it no longer becomes a bargain anymore, right? So understand that the, 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 the financial institutions always want to buy at fair, what they perceive as fair value as a bare minimum, yeah? Preferably a bargain. Of course, we all want to buy at bargains. But the more times a level is touched is the more obvious it becomes to everyone else. Therefore, it's not a bargain anymore. It, 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 you know, because everyone else is buying at the same price because they can see the level. They can see the price. Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, read Danny's comments. So Danny, heard, Danny said, I heard somewhere that 200 is looked at by large traders. Yep. So it becomes self-fulfilling. Uh, trade as people believe a reaction will occur potentially absolutely and that's that's generally I think what um, happens in the trading world yeah is that it does become a self-fulfilling prophecy like like Fibonacci for example Fibonacci you know the 61.8 the 32.8 um, 61 point is it is 61.8 and 32.8 percent fib levels right it becomes self-fulfilling prophecy because everyone's now thinking, okay, pull back to that level with some sort of level of confluence, you know, where it's support or resistance, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But still, again, why? You could, trust me, Danny, search. I've searched, you know, the uh, uh, the internet for, for the whys of the 200 period moving average, and there is none, apart from exactly what you said, large traders or a large trader decided that it was probably back tested and then it becomes law, right? It becomes a, a thing, an echo chamber. Yeah. But does that mean that that is the best trade? As we know, we want to do things differently to how everyone else is doing it. Yeah. This is the key because if everyone else is doing is, is trading the same way, we haven't got a chance. We do not stand a chance in the trading world. So um, the second example I wanted to show you, by the way, is is here. So this is the, the monthly and this is the three monthly, the black line. So again, just to show you basically when when, when price trade starts to trade above it. So we've got it right here. We've got the um, uh, price starts to go above. Then when it pulls back into this into this zone, the first touch of that three month fair value and you see prices go to the upside. Not to say that that's the reason why prices went to the upside because no one knows about the fundamentals at this world, whatever chart this is. And I deliberately, you know, kept it that way just to, um, uh, just for simplicity. But also as well, I want to, I want to draw you back to the, uh, the fact that the more touches, the, 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 the lower the probability. And that's not to say that a second touch or a third touch won't work. That's just to say that the, 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 the best touch the first touch is always the one where you 
probably have the higher probability if if you're right about the long term fundamentals, therefore the long term trade. So we touched the first time on the on the on the monthly um, fair value average, and then the second time we touched wasn't so much of a bargain. Yes, price was bought here, but then when prices came a bit lower into the first touch of the three month, yeah, that's where we got a move higher. So remember, guys, we always want to understand value. And maybe this wasn't seen as potential value. There were traders that wanted to get in, the longer term traders wanted to get in on, they were looking at price over the last three months and determined that, in fact, I do think prices are going to go higher. Yeah. But I want to get a bit more of a discount. I don't want to trade on the monthly. I want to look at the three monthly or the quarterly um, price and look at the, 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 fair value from there and that for me is the first time i really want to you know buy and again nobody knows you know what is going on as far as you know what was going on fundamentally at this time we just assumed that we knew the fundamentals we wanted to be buyers and this is these are the opportunities to look for or the first opportunities to look for buying or buy trades so Again, I alluded to this before, combining moving averages with supply and demand zones. So we always need our fundamental analysis first. Yeah, fundamentals and risk sentiment always come first. So we can identify current um, or potential current and future value. So potential current value, meaning is price a bargain right now? If price is a bargain right now or wherever it is, then brilliant. Yeah. If it's not a bargain, where would it be a bargain? And what is price likely to do in the future? Most of us know these things, right? Again, if we know, for example, a central one central bank is hiking rates and another one is cutting rates, then we know potentially where value is going to go. Um, same thing with if a country is in a recession and another one is in the you know expansion or boom phase of its economic cycle. It's obvious there's trade divergences there. So Fundamental analysis and risk sentiment analysis first to determine potential current and future value. Yeah. And that way, obviously, we can determine our trade direction and the potential trend. The trend doesn't occur because of a, 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 a pin bar at a level of support or resistance. It doesn't occur because there was some sort of Elliott wave count or any nonsense like that. It's determined by, you know, the fundamentals basically major money moving their, you know, allocate, reallocating their, you know, whatever it is, funds based off of macroeconomics, not chart analysis. So then we use supply and demand zones as areas of identifying where past value was, yeah, to, um, uh, because there's, those are areas where prices were cheap, right? So higher highs, higher lows, lower highs and lower lows are proven areas of, you know, the bargain prices or potential bargain prices. And again, that's all in, you know, the course, not to go over it here. And then what we want to do is, you know, obviously go long or short at those demand zones with the confluence of moving average fair value. Yeah. So our fair value, if, if, for example, the monthly fair value. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples, a few examples. And we, and you can back test this and we can go through some live examples as well. I think we might do that at the end of this uh, presentation. So, again, in this example, right, if we had established that the fundamentals were telling us that, you know, somewhere down here was an absolute bargain. Yeah. And let me actually let me get my uh, get my annotation. So let's say, for example, somewhere around here, we established that, you know, there's a bargain. Yeah. We know that higher highs, higher lows are potential areas of, 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 of value. Yeah. Where we want to be buyers. So we saw nice high, low, higher high right there. We know that to be a fact. That's a potential bargain area. Otherwise, prices wouldn't have went higher. And then when prices come back down into this area, we also have and understand that there was at least a monthly fair value price as well in combination with that area. We saw it again here. Yeah. And we saw it again in and around here. Yeah. So where we have price based 
value and fair value. We also have time-based fair value when it comes to understanding um, uh, value, basically. That's what we're looking for. Um, let me move on to the next screen, the next chart. Yeah, so this was be, this would be the three monthly uh, chart or three monthly fair value. And again, what we saw, let's say, for example, prices come back or prices have gone above the, the, the moving average and we're looking for a pullback into a moving average fair value. Yeah, so that's a three month fair value. But what we didn't see was it come back into a demand zone. Yeah, so we want to, we don't want to take those types of trades. We want to have the confluence of the demand zone. But we did get an example here where we made nice higher highs, higher lows. Prices pulled back into an area where that was proven value because prices went to the upside. And then we have a nice three monthly fair value confluence. First touches are always the best, but our base is the um, is understanding the uh, that we should be trading this in uh, confluence with supply and demand zones. Yeah. This is the six monthly. So again, we had a nice cross above. So prices were was below. Yeah. Prices crossed above. Took a while to come back, but we saw a nice zone. And by the way, this is the actual, this would be the actual zone as well. So that is dynamic you know, support and resistance right there. That's what you'd be looking for within that zone. The prices came back to a demand zone, came back into the six month or, or yeah, six month moving average. And uh, that was some nice confluence there. And then we also have the yearly, right? So this is the two, five, three. So again, prices went above that area there. Let me just uh, get my drawing tool right here. Yeah. And then we've got prices go above there. Prices pull back, but not into any kind of demand zone. And then the next time prices come back into that yearly fair value combination was right there. So it can be very powerful, very, very, very powerful. Yeah, very, uh, there's a lot of confluence and understanding why you should be buying at certain areas. Yeah. Um, one second, then I've got one more slide. All right. So this is basically everything combined. So again, walking through this, let me just uh, walk through this with you. So understand that. We want the confluence of supply and demand first, and then we're looking for the fair value, right? And you can see where prices started to come across above, came back down into the monthly fair value, but we didn't have any kind of demand zone there. So that wouldn't have been a trade. Prices make higher highs, higher lows, right? Prices cross above pretty much all of the major moving averages. So you've got the, the free month, you've got the yearly, which is the yellow, you've got the green line, which is the six month, yeah? So prices crossed above those. When prices came back into the zone, you had lots of confluence there. You had not only the six month, you had the yearly, but you also had the six month. And that was the first time prices have come back into that zone. Nice buying opportunity within that demand zone. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Anyone have any any questions, by the way? Anyone got any questions? No, no, no. Right. So pretty much, does everyone have the um, moving averages applied to their charts? Or does everyone actually even use the moving averages in the way that, um, you know, I uh, do I did have in the course? Well, if you don't, you do. Yeah, definitely. It's it's 
it's definitely worth having, you know, on, on a chart somewhere. And if you're not too sure on how to apply the moving averages, pretty much uh, the old ones where we use like, I mean, you don't even need those ones anymore, by the way, Sam, you can literally just do it this way now. So um, because do you know what as well? Trading view has, um, has updated their moving averages where you don't need that, indicator that moving average indicator anymore you don't really need it because you can actually do and i'll explain why you can do the you can do um uh time specific moving averages so um what you want to do is go to indicators and strategies yeah first of all which is up here and then you want to basically put um a few moving averages so just moving average and moving average exponential yeah so put four of those and then four of these so you're going to put one um uh, uh, monthly to 21 period, you're going to put a 63 period, you're going to put a 1, 2, 6 period, and you're going to put a 2, 5, 3 period. And then you're going to put for the moving average exponential pretty much the same thing. So you put in four of the moving averages and then four of the exponential moving averages on there. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the settings on each one. Yes, yeah? so top left hand side, you'll see a settings tab, go to the settings on each one. And then you're going to, for the moving average, what you're going to do is you're going to do indicate a thing, right? Which is the same as the chart. The length is going to be the 21 period. And then the source is going to be open, high, low, close. Open, high, low, close is just um, getting more of an average price. That's all it is. It's not necessarily the make or break all. I know on MT4, for example, you don't really have um, open, high, low, close on there. I think you only have like a open or close on there. Um, but what you want to do is just, uh, even if you just do the close price, that's fine. It's not, um, it's not necessarily going to, you know, it's not a make or break or anything like that, but the indicator time frame, as I was saying to Sam, is that what uh, trading view did was they updated this because normally what would happen is, is if you put a moving average on a, on a, on a price chart, if you change the time frame, then the, uh, you know, the, 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 um, to maybe the four hour, then the moving average would then take the, the, the four hour 21 period or 21, the last 20, 21 four hour candles. Yeah. Whereas if you do, um, if you do, uh, uh, indicator as the, um, as the one day chart, you want to select it as a one day chart matter of fact, yeah, not necessarily the same as chart. Sorry. You want to select it as the one day chart, then no matter what time frame, no matter what time frame you um you're on it will always display the daily uh time frame moving averages which is basically what's important because as i was saying what good is a 21 the last 21 candles on a four hour time frame telling you it's not telling you anything it's just telling you what average price is over that period of time what is significant is that you need to understand the actual time, you know, the time horizon that we're looking at, yeah, and why the monthly, the free monthly, the sick monthly, the yearly is actually important. So you want to change that, in fact, to one day, yeah. Length is 21 and source on um, trading view, open, high, low, close, but on um, MT4, doesn't really matter too much. Just do close. And then for the, for example, the 21 period moving average, I choose blue, and then you can choose your colors for each one. So do the same thing for the MA and the EMA. And when you go to the second MA and EMA, which would be the, 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 the 63, the three month period moving average, then you want to change that to another color, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, these are, these were basically, you know, the steps also as well, you do have the option and I do have them on my chart as well for the two year, the five year and the 10 year fair value um, moving averages as well. So those are long-term moving averages. And you'd be surprised how accurate these can actually be. And when I say accurate, I'm talking about just understanding, you know, from a fair value perspective, you know, that these can be uh, actually quite um, uh, worth watching in that sense. Yeah. Um, so this is what it really should, you know, look like on a price chart. 
where you have your monthly moving average, three monthly moving average, six monthly moving average. When you're looking to, you know, when you're looking to trade these moving averages, try not to get caught up in the, um, I guess, the accuracy of 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 price and um, a moving averages. And what I mean by that is that these are just fair value. Right. This is just telling you where fair value is. It's not telling you exactly where price is going to definitely um, reverse from, even though you have examples of that, you know, on here. Yeah. It's not going to tell you exactly where it is. Remember, the you're supposed to determine value or potential value via your fundamentals and risk sentiment. Yeah. And then use, you know, the, 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 the moving averages in confluence with for example, um, supply and demand zones as to whether you want to get involved in that trade and it's just adding as confidence. So I give you, you know, the most recent example on this chart would be the, um, would be here, right? Where you've got, it looks like you've got a bit of a supply zone here. Yeah. And I don't know how many times this had been touched on a Swiss franc, but you had a six monthly Moving average, prices came into that zone along with our supply zone. Nice trade. If that was a bargain for what? The Swiss franc. Right now, you know, the date being, I think, what is it, the 27th today of February? Um, you know, you don't really want to be buying the Swiss franc, you know what I mean, at, at this point in time. But that's where, you know, we are. And that's, that's what we're looking at. And prices can go, you know, beyond those levels. Right. Doesn't mean that, you know, it's it's, um, you know, it's the strategy doesn't work. And we're going to do a bit of, I guess, you know, some some back testing as well. Um, if you want to, I can stay for another maybe 25 minutes and we can just go over, you know, whatever charts you want and just really kind of look at the, um, you know, the uh, from a technical analysis perspective, not necessarily from a fundamental perspective, because if we're going back to maybe, you know, 20, 30 years who knows what you know was going on then? But what I want just want to show you, I want to show you the confidence of these um, of these uh, um, of these moving averages and how they actually you know do you know tend to work out if you got the fundamentals right. So with that being said, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much. I think it comes to a close. We bring this uh, this presentation to a close. Yeah. So I think just to have a bit of a recap, oh, I think I was meant to delete this. <laughs> um, but just as a recap, so we want to determine the potential value and future trends using fundamental analysis and risk sentiment. Yeah. Then use moving averages to identify time based fair value on a price chart. You know, the time horizons we want to use are the one month, three month, six month and one year. And then you can add the two year, five year, 10 year if you want. And then moving averages should be used in confluence with the daily or the weekly supply and demand zones. So that's basically what we are looking at. Any questions, guys, by the way, any questions? Or tell me your, give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts on um on the uh on the presentation. Really made sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. And we're we're gonna go over we're gonna go over um some charts, any charts you want. I'm not gonna cherry pick any charts. You know, you can tell me what charts you want to look at, and then we'll just go over, we'll spend the next uh, you know, maybe 20 minutes uh going over any uh any charts. But any any thoughts, guys, any more thoughts? Yeah, eye opening. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is eye opening. Euro New Zealand. Yeah, finding some logic to move in averages. Yes, and I'm telling you, if you if you've got the time, I'm not saying that you should. I'm not saying that you should do it. Yeah, but if you go to the most popular YouTube videos or go to any um, you know TikTok videos or whatever it is that you use Instagram videos. That I'm telling you, they're going to give you a lot of the same nonsense. And it's not actually, matter of fact, it's wrong of me to say. 
it's not nonsense in a sense but it's again it's the echo chamber right it's the echo chamber someone's you know had a certain narrative of what they think moving averages are and how to trade moving averages and then everybody has their opinion on moving averages so i'll give you an example right so one of the one of the things let me go back through the presentation um so one of the one of the things is as we go to unlearn it's like you know um you you know a moving average is used to identify trends and confirm reversals like we know that's nonsense that i don't care who you are i can prove it without a shadow of a doubt that is nonsense because price isn't driven by um uh by um by technicals <clears throat> Yes, there is technical buying going on and selling going on, one hundred percent. But but value isn't driven by by the technicals. Price isn't driven by technicals. Yeah, and also as well, if you think about it, if that is if that is a thing, let's say for example that is a thing, right? Then how can you say that it's? How can someone say that it's used? And by the way, this is in this is in the same video. I'm not going to tell you which video it is, by the way. So the same video that said that it's used to identify trends and confirm reversals is the same video that said that it's a lagging indicator. So please tell me how something can be used to identify trends, but also be a lagging indicator. How can it identify the trend and be a lagging indicator? There you go. So, you know, tells you if price is trending up or down or sideways. It, it, it doesn't tell you that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's telling you just a, a, an average price. It's just giving you the average price over a certain period. It doesn't tell you that. It doesn't confirm if the trend is in motion or reversing. It does not do that. And you can see that without, um, without actually even looking at an, a moving average. And it's because people don't understand what moving averages truly are telling you. It's because they don't, they, all they do is they focus totally on technicals. And then what they do is they create a narrative based around technicals. And as you can see on here, and again, there's no shade to anybody. There's no, you know, I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I'm not trying to talk down on anybody, right? I'm just saying that you're going to get an echo chamber when you go to YouTube because there's 50 period moving averages, 20 period moving averages, 200 period moving average. If you see, you know, on here, 250 and things like that. And that's, that's all that generally, you know, the, uh, the crowd tend to, uh, to use without really just understanding what is actually a moving average and why you really shouldn't even be using it on, um, you know, a, a 15 minute chart. You shouldn't be using it on a 30 minute chart or an hourly chart. What, and again, I'll say this again, but what has the last 20 hourly candles? Yeah. Why is that significant? What is the last 50 hours of trading? Yeah. The fair value of that. Why is that significant? It's not. Just because price bounces off of it doesn't mean it's significant. So, yeah, there's some there's some very, you know, deep thought that needs to go behind this. And now you understand it. We can, you know, it, it gives the chart a lot more significance and you can use this by the way you know I, I trade etfs for example i say trade etfs i'm more just buy into etfs if you're one of those people that you know are doing long-term investing it's a great great confluence of understanding where value potentially is if you're doing any kind of long-term investing because you can look back on maybe the yearly fair value and look at price over the past year the 253 moving average and say all right price is coming down but do you know what i know the value of this asset class for example the stock market or bonds or whatever currency pair and say all right then or commodity for example and say all right then oils come down to its annual fair value why not buy there or why not buy copper or whatever it is so anyways enough for the rent um 
you guys want to go into any charts? I think, did someone mention Euro, Euro New Zealand? Why Euro New Zealand? It's random. But um, yeah, let's go into, let's go into some, some charts. Let's go into some charts, right? Euro New Zealand. I'm going to have, let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back as far as we can. And again, this is, remember as well, this isn't like, you know, a technical strategy, fundamentals. We have no idea why we would have been buying or selling until maybe after the fact. This is one of the things that I've got to stress because I don't know what was going on with the Euro New Zealand back in 2002. Yeah. But obviously after the fact, you saw that there should have been, you know, that there was definitely value around here. There was definitely a change, right? Because we could see after the fact. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this, is if we understood why we should be buying here, then what we're going to do is we're going to ignore moving averages to the other side, right? Is it correct? That's just the way that we, we would look at it. We wouldn't look at moving averages contrary to our position if we understood what was where value truly was. So again, let's look at just moving average crosses, right? So we're looking at, you know, the 20, actually, you know, I'll break it down. Let's do, let's just focus on, for example, the 21 period moving average. So the monthly moving average. So prices crossed up. And again, we have no idea fundamentally, but let's just say that wasn't a trade, right? Or that was a trade, right? And we got it wrong. Prices are now moving down in the downtrend. You're a trend follower, all right, which I, I don't subscribe to. And then the thing you want to do is do what? Look at that. The first touch after prices have crossed down, that was fair value to the downside. Again, prices crossed above, prices came back down into there. Prices came ooh, just about nearly touched there and just about touched there, there. Prices crossed down, prices reactive, prices crossed down. And again, remember, just remember this, that no idea what the fundamentals are saying. When, pro when you see moving averages kind of doing something like this, yeah, and you've got loads and loads of moving averages, because, because people are, are trying to take um, uh, uh, their direction from the moving average and trying to determine the trend from a moving average, it actually doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, if prices are doing this, and we know why prices should be doing something like this. And the reason why prices are doing, you know, in a range is because of a few things, a couple of things. One could be the fact that you have two strong currencies or two weak currencies, you know, against each other. Yeah, that could be the reason for a ranging market. The market is in agreement really between the value of that currency, commodity, et cetera, right? So they're talking that, you know, this would be maybe what would be a, a deemed an expensive price. And this was what would be deemed a cheap price. So when prices are in a range, it's because the market is saying that, let's say, for example, this is 10 and this is maybe seven, that that is the range of which we think all market participants think the value of that commodity, that asset, that currency, that exchange rate should be. Nobody's willing to buy above 10 and no one's willing to sell below seven. Yeah, it has nothing to do with, okay, we're trying to predict the trend from, from, from you know, from moving averages. That's the reason why people get put off of moving averages because they don't understand all the moving average is telling you is where fair value is. It's not trying to tell you where, you know, that, that we're in a ranging market. You can see where, where you're in a ranging market. Yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So let me just, uh, you know, continue to go. Right. So you can pretty much see again, who knows, right? So there we're between a bit of a range between there and there. Ooh, that was a bit of a, Strange level. Yeah. And remember, I always say if something's not clear, if something is not clear fundamentally, yeah, then just don't trade it. Yeah. If you've got, you know, fair value and it's looking at the past, you know, month's price, 
that's telling just fair value. It's not telling you where the trend is going to be. That's the reason why pay traders would, would, would probably, you know, buy or sell here and then possibly try and get short and get stopped out. And all of a sudden they're trying to sell here and then they go, oh, it, it told me to, to, to sell here. But then, hold on, it's telling me to buy here. Oh, it's telling me to sell here and I get stopped out. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Determine value first. And also as well, none of us know whether the monthly fair value, whether the three monthly fair value, whether the six monthly fair value, whether the yearly fair value is going to be the one that is going to reverse. That's what we need to definitely keep our eye on. But let's just, you know, for argument's sake, look at, you know, uh, uh, when the trend does start to appear, when you start to see the pullback. So here we go. Nice. So the trends appeared to the downside, and then that's where you get there. You get a second touch, and probably that might have been the three monthly up there. So there we go. So the first cross of that three monthly, which is the black line, you've get you've got it here. Whoever would have thought, eh, the sixty three period moving average would be something. <laughs> Most people would do the fifty period, you know, or the one hundred period. Whoever thought the one to you know, six period moving average. It's, it seems very random, right? But it's not. It's not. It's really not. So remember as well, again, the rules that once the level's been touched several times, it becomes starts becoming less of a bargain. So less of a bargain, less of a bargain. Yeah, you could have made money there. And when prices come back up to it, the next one is going to be right there. Yeah, so do your thing da, 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 da. so first touch second touch is going to be around here as well so nice and then you have to expect something here so then maybe there was a six monthly fair value zone here yeah there we go so there also as well i just want to point out as well just because prices break above that level right or close above that level on a daily time frame chart doesn't mean that the level has gone or or that 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 zone is no longer valid yeah the reason why i say that is because what you may want to look at is the weekly so i'm going to go to the week weekly chart now on a weekly chart you can pretty much see that prices came inside that three month sorry that six month fair value and actually it did react Remember, price is not perfect. If prices were reacting off of accurately off of all these zones and stuff like that, it would be like, you know, it'd be very analog. This is an imperfect market. But understand what you're buying. Yeah, if you understand that this is a bargain, potentially, yeah, and, it, and it's in alignment with, for example, a nice weekly zone, which would have been around here. That would have been a sell trade supply there we are lower highs lower lows touch there touch there lovely to the downside let me just clear this up as well yeah so just because prices go above it doesn't mean that that's it. You know, it's game over. That's that's it. Again, we don't live in a in a perfect in a perfect world. It's just telling you where fair value is, and if anything above that would be considered what a potential. If you want to get short, it's a potential. What's the word? Potential, potential, potential. <laughs> Stop hunt. Well, yeah, it could be bargain. That's it, Rizani. Yeah, it could be a potential bargain price. And what are stop hunts? When you think about stop hunts, not to get sidetracked, but what are stop hunts, right? What are stop hunts? Stop hunts are the ultimate buying, the ultimate bargain. Above a level, spikes above a level. There we are. That's where the institutions were looking to short. That's where everyone else was looking to short, stops them out, and that's it. Yeah, so it's it's if this is fair value, remember this is just a fair value zone. So between can you see the uh where it says 119 um where my cursor is? So one sorry, one uh point nine nine five two. So those zones, that's where fair value is, the six month fair value is. 
And just because price goes above it doesn't mean it's over. If you're if you're also within a potential supply zone, it just means that that's fair value. But this whole area here is a level that we would would have been interested in selling anyway. Yeah, because like I said, price isn't perfect. It's not perfect. Anyways, as we go forward, and let me just uh, let me just get back to. I'll have to just uh, go all the way back to here. I'm not going to go through the, the whole. How, how many years is it? Bloody hell, twenty years, nearly twenty years, nineteen years of uh, price action. <laughs> I don't think I'll, I'll do that, but just to we we'll go through it enough, just so that you get an, an understanding, you know, of of really where you want to be, and I'll add the the annual, the yearly one as well. So there we are. So look at that now. So look at the annual. How accurate was that? That was where we were before. Yes, it went past that for, from a fair value perspective, but right above it was that was the uh, was the yearly fair value, right there. Yeah. So again, none of us know. For example, look where the, look where but look where this trend was, right? So that trend was to the upside. So then, what we want to do, if let's say, for example, we were right about this trend and we were looking to get involved from a fundamental perspective, yeah. First thing we're looking at is the monthly fair value. As soon as it crosses above, comes back, touches it, but it really kind of crossed above there. So there we go. That is a nice buying opportunity. That would have been a nice demand zone right there. Demand with that. So bargain price plus potential fair value and then look what happens to the upside. But again, this, this is not being driven by technicals. This is more being driven by whatever was, was shifting price higher. If we understood this risk sentiment fundamental wise, monetary policy wise, then that is a nice buying opportunity. Yeah. Did we have any kind of three month period moving average? Oh, yeah, we did. Well, slightly so we had prices cross above the three month the black line let me just get rid of let me just hide these one sec so this was the three month period moving average we come down into that demand zone but we had the three month fair value also within that zone as well which added confluence and then you could see where prices come up right so again fundamentals probably shifted look at that trend yeah, whatever shifted the fundamentals and caused price to come to the downside. Again, let's look at that. Uh, you can pretty much see yeah, where we had, again, first cross there and there. Nice demand. Actually, I'll draw that properly. Sorry, guys. Let me draw it properly. There we are. That would have been a supply zone right there within that what is known as the monthly fair value prices to the downside. We had the first cross of the free monthly fair value within that, again, that supply zone. So this was what we saw. And we can go on and on and on and on if you wanted to. It's the same thing. I, I would definitely suggest that you guys do it and really understand and really get the confluence of this and you'll start to see fair value you think to yourself hmm really some really 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 nice trades but again i must stress and must 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 stress it's about understanding future trends potentially future trends value yeah so fundamental analysis which determines value and if we know our fundamental analysis, yeah, then we should be able to predict potentially where the trends are. You know, the last trends I think I predicted was um, was the Aussie, New Zealand and Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. And anyone who's been with me for a while has known from last year, you know, Maxwell, Sam, um, 
you know, Vitaly, I'm sure you guys have, have known that I've been saying that for ages. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at them right now, I've been saying that from last year and look at the trends. Look at those massive, massive trends that have been on, on the uh, Aussie Swiss, Aussie Yen, New Zealand Swiss, New Zealand Yen and CAD Swiss and CAD Yen. Yeah. So then it's just a case of predicting the trend and then looking at where you've got supply and demand zones and then also yeah, thank you, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, credible predictions. It's not, it's not, it's, but it's not a prediction in that sense. I'm, I'm, and I thank you for it, but it's just, it's just understanding where money is going to go. You know what I mean? And once you get a few of the, if, if, you don't need a lot of trade ideas. You don't need to have lots and lots of trade ideas like every day. And this is where traders get so confused because they think, they they really think short term. What's going to happen today? What's going to happen this week? It's like generally nobody knows because short term time frames short term time frame it's maybe goes into something else are really the realm of potentially accumulating so you've got so many you know you've got trillions of uh, of dollars and pounds going into the market right so at any one point yeah there is there's there's accumulations going on there's conflicting flows so you know one bank might say might think that this is you know a buy another one might say this is a sell some um you know market makers might be hedging out of their positions da, 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 da. There's, so, there's so much going on right in the short term that you don't really understand but what you will see in the long term is where all of that positioning in the short term was actually headed yeah. So it's it's not, you know, it's it's the realm of the short term trader. It's very difficult to predict price day to day and even week to week. But, you know, if you understand future value where values more likely to go in the next month or two or three or four or five. Yeah. Based off of monetary policy, based off of, um, you know, GDP and, and business cycles or risk sentiment, it's, you know, it's just a case of filtering out the noise and buying in areas and selling in areas or going long, going short in areas where you know, well, we never know 100% for sure where you, where you think, okay, this is maybe a decent probability trade. I think prices are going to go to the downside. Where do I want to look for a sell trade? All right, I've seen a really good trade right here. Yeah, where we see lower highs, lower lows being made, prices come up to that three month fair value after it's been, you know, crossed. Boom, there we are. But in the weeks, because remember, this is a daily chart, in the weeks where prices were going higher, so this is one, two, three, four, five, maybe about two weeks of price action. Yeah. There would have been traders saying, if I was saying go, you know, buy the New Zealand dollar, for example, there would have been traders telling me in two weeks, Leon, you're wrong about the trade. Why is prices going higher? Yeah, it's not about what happens in, in one week, two weeks, three weeks. In fact, recently it happened with the dollar. I'm not saying the dollar is going to, you know, go down, but it happened with the dollar with me because I was saying the dollar was going to, you know, should um, strengthen against the euro, right? I was I was saying that from the, for the last couple of weeks, um, but it didn't strengthen in the way that I was thinking that it was. Maybe it's just, like I said, a timing issue. But now you're starting to see the potential for the dollar, you know, uh, price to increase and the euro to decrease, for example. So sometimes we're not always right. We're not always accurate. We're not trying to be right all the time. No worries, Rizzani. Um, I'm nearly I'm nearly wrapped up anyway. I've nearly finished. But yeah, take it easy. Um, the point I'm trying to make is, is that have a longer term view on price. And this is what, fair this is what the moving averages are really kind of telling you is to have a longer term view on price yeah and trading and once you do you'll understand potentially you know you can pick your trades look at that nice trade there boom to the downside etc anyways guys um I would say definitely put set set these up on your charts. Look for certain trades and even look for if you've been through, you know, if you've been trading for the past with me for the past, you know, six months, a year or whatever it is, three months. Just look at what you know about the fundamentals to be true. Yeah. Because 
you know, we, we can look back on the chart and look back on in time and say, all right, then, well, we should have been buying the Australian dollar against the New Zealand, um, against the uh, Swiss franc or the Japanese yen, for example. We knew that. And, and then look at all the trade setups, the buy trade setups, along with fair value and see how many, you know, you could have entered, you know what I mean? And, uh, and do the same thing with the CAD Swiss, CAD yen and uh, all the others. Anyways, guys, uh, da, 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 da. Is there, was there any questions, by the way?